Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Fit Biz Journey podcast. I'm here today again in our back courtyard at our New York City location, and it's freezing, by the way. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but we have um, Katie Sampaio. Sampaio, and I'm sorry, I have asked her three times before <laughs> off the camera. I'm just really bad with last names and <laughs> pronunciation. But Katie Sampaio is here today with us. And she is a personal trainer, she's a yoga instructor, and a best-selling author and international retreat leader. So Katie, thank you very much for being here. Yeah. Um, how, how do you like New York so far? I love New York personally. <laughs> yep. I feel like the city has so much energy. Mm -hmm. So every time I'm here, there's just so much going on. And I really enjoy just being like constantly <laughs> in stuff and busy. So. Be I like being up here. Besides the weather, right? Or the weather is okay? Uh, this weekend, not really. <laughs> okay. I wish it was a little bit warmer, but yeah. you know, today it's okay, actually. So yes. I'm, I'm happy about that. Yeah, yesterday was horrible, guys. Yeah, it was horrible, and then Friday <laughs> was worse too, but yeah, it's As okay. But some of our listeners, by the way, from Chicago, and yesterday it snowed, two days ago it snowed in Chicago, and right now it's May, basically. Okay, well, I'm glad that yeah. we're not in Chicago <laughs> yes. again, because that's unacceptable, like, right now. Exactly. You know. So anyways, Katie, I wanted to have you on this for multiple reasons. There are so many personal trainers and personal trainers who want to be gym owners or published authors. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about so many things with you yeah. um, that would help our listeners to, you know, uh, better set their goals, because number one, uh, what I learned about you is is that um, you have, at one point of your life, you felt like you have no control over it, right? Yeah. Just like the hustle of a personal trainer and all the things going around, <laughs> yeah. um, which is, we understand it can be tough. And then when you decided to make that change, you you basically have had to change and shift your mindset first, right? Oh yeah, 100%. Would you, would you be able to talk about that? How you got started and how this whole thing happened for the crowd? It's, yeah, yep. you want me to start from like why I got in the fitness industry sort of thing? Yeah, go ahead. Just um, go. Well, I've always been super active. I've always played sports. Mm -hmm. I've always, every hobby that I've ever had involves biking, running, mm -hmm. playing, I grew up playing tennis. You know, I just, that's what I like to do. Going out, that's cool, but that's not like my main thing. Yep. Um, and I, right after college, I got a marketing degree and I went the traditional route and went to find a, you know, a corporate real job. And I only did it because of the pressure from society, yep. the pressure from my family. What, <laughs> you know, this is what you need to do in order to be successful. And I honestly didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do yet. I just knew I wanted to have my own business one day. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So once I started uh, working out of a corporate office and sitting all day long on a computer, getting yelled at every time I would want to leave and even try to work from outside or something, I was like, this isn't working. Like, mm -hmm. I need to go somewhere where I can actually be physically active and not just sit here dying on my uh, my little desk stool <laughs> like like all day long and that's when I was like you know I really love sports and I, I feel like I'm a good teacher and a good leader so I was already taking you know those fitness classes at the gym uh, like a bar class yeah. lesmos classes and stuff and and one of the instructors actually had um, you know an opening for to hire a new a new instructor and she's like, Katie, you should do it. You're here all the time. You know, you have good energy. You should just do it. So I did. And I, I got the job. And then I, I went to the training and got the job. And then I started teaching after work. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I really like this. Like, this was the best part of my day. I was teaching like twice after work. And I loved just like the impact that I felt like I was really making on people's lives. Like I could see that people were happy and people were getting results. Unlike my other job where I'm behind a desk all day, I was working for a subprime lending company. Oh. Wasn't really something I was even <laughs> passionate about, like period. I could have cared less about what I was marketing. So oh, man. this was yeah. way better. And then I decided to take it a step further to see like, okay, so is this what I want to do all in? So then I went to my CEO and asked if I could pretty much design from scratch a corporate wellness program. Wow. And I did that. Awesome. And I went to him, I got a, you know, a certain amount of money, he got mats, weights, we got it, like a whole space in the in our new headquarters for it. And I taught the employees fitness classes after work without getting paid multiple days a week and also did nutrition coaching for them. This is before I became a certified personal trainer or anything else mm -hmm. really. And I loved it. I was like so spending all my entire day at work planning my classes for them. So that's when I said, okay, I'm gonna go get my personal training certification. And then I did that and I quit my job and was working at one of the best gyms in Baltimore like two weeks later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just, I really did a, I, I just, once I, I touched in it for like six months, 
and then I committed to it and I went for it and I didn't really have a plan. I just knew that when I joined that gym, I was going to mentor every single trainer, every single one and really learn, you know, all the different styles of training. I only knew what I knew. So I had already been practicing yoga and teaching bar. So I could only offer my clients Pilates, bar, yoga stuff. So, you know, when you become a trainer, you need to brand yourself as something. Yep. I stuck with that. I said, I'm the yoga girl. So I said, all the salespeople, if anyone wants to know anything about yoga, Pilates, you know, strengthening in that sort of way, send them to me. I'm the, I'm the trainer for this. And at my gym at the time, there was no other trainer that had these specialties. Awesome. So that helped me immediately be able to fill up my book of clients really fast. Within three months, I had a full schedule. Wow. So, and I worked my ass off to get there. So, I mean, I was there all the time in the morning and at night, and I'm not a morning person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, I prefer to train people in the middle of the day and, like, into, like, 9 p.m. or something yep. instead of, like, 5 in the morning. Yep. But I did it, and I did what I needed to do. And then when I started to learn from the other trainers, I found out, okay, this is what I really like, like, what mm -hmm. also I wanted to add into the mix. I love the, the CrossFit aspects. I love strength and conditioning, using kettlebells, bands, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, some more high intensity training. So then I learned about that and then I started to add that sort of stuff in and that kind of rounds me into like the kind of trainer that I am today and what I focus on. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how I began that journey at the gym. Uh -huh. And then after the gym for a while, you know, I was like, I'm not making enough money at this gym <laughs> <laughs> because at that, that, my gym was taking a lot of my money. Yeah. Uh, we could charge whatever we wanted, which was nice. Oh, that's and, cool. And I charged What high. was the percentage? Or how did it work? So it depended on uh, how many, how much revenue you brought in mm -hmm. per month for them. Okay. So I just booked as many 30 minute sessions as I could because I would make more in two 30 minute sessions back to back than one, wow. one hour. Yep. I was smart that way. Um, so at first there, t I was only getting 40%, mm -hmm. which, Got it. Yep. okay. With the taxes and all this stuff taken out, it's like, all right. And then you can go to 50 and then you get to the 60. But 60 is like you have to commit to a bunch of other weird stuff with them. Like you're really locked in with them. Uh -huh. And I didn't want that because I didn't know where I wanted to go with my career. And I didn't want to be pigeonholed yep. like this. So I stuck with the 50 percent, which, you know, I was just for, for the amount of work I felt like I was putting in, I'm like, this isn't working. So that's why I decided to start teaching my own classes mm -hmm. at one of the local parks after work. And I started a boot camp and brunch program. Who doesn't <laughs> want boot camp and brunch? Yeah, and I, sounds good. You know, you work out and then you have that afterwards. And, I, and then I didn't have to pay for any sort of space. And then mm -hmm. I got to just, you know, pocket all my money cash. And I yep. had my, I started my own uh, LLC up and everything. So that, uh -huh. was, that, that was legal. But of course, the gym had a problem with that, right? So <laughs> I was the, constantly getting like, why are you doing this I'm like dude I'm doing it one day a week on a Saturday when it's I don't even train clients like yep. leave me alone like let me make some extra money to like enjoy myself yep. but with that I just knew I just didn't fit just like I didn't fit in the corporate structure at my mm -hmm. old at my first job I didn't fit in the corporate structure at this gym like yep. I don't I'm not gonna bash them for running a business the way that they run a business that's that's fine I just did not fit into that mold yep. so I decided at a, at a certain point when we came to more disagreements, uh, actually when I went to publish my book, I oh. didn't get any support from them at, like, at all. Uh -huh. like, so uh, that kind of was an actually more reprimanded for it. Like it was a bad thing that I did. Uh -huh. So from that point forward, I was like, no, we're really not going to match eye to eye on like where I see my career going. And this was a great learning experience. And I'm glad that I got to learn from so many amazing trainers at that gym. Um, and that's when I decided to leave. And that's when I went full on into my own business, my own training business, and, and just started renting spaces yep. and, and training people. And I had half the clients and double the money. Yep. Immediately. I'm like, this is great. I have more time to mm -hmm. do what I actually want to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And my money situation is now way better. But mm -hmm. you know, you had to build the client uh, clientele up first in order to be able to do that. Like you have to have some sort of reputation. And yep. I just, my, my, my clients left with me. They were loyal to me. They weren't loyal awesome. to, to the gym. Um, so yeah, and then that's when I also decided to write the book because there was a burnout, right? Yep. Just like most trainers experience. <laughs> yep. You're running around nonstop, like, you know, you. what time did you wake up today? Uh, every time it's usually, now it's basically 3.59 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think at like six, you're gonna say. But is, today I did not, today I lied. Today I woke up at 5.15. <laughs> oh, so you slept in? Yes. Because he asked me to come here at like 6 a.m. or something, <laughs> one of the time options, I'm yeah. like, 
what's going to be the <laughs> latest time option that you're giving me? Because, like, yep. I can't see. I told you I'm not a morning, yeah, not a morning person. Yes. But in order to do this job, yep. you need to be in there at 6 a.m. Yep. And, and all of this stuff. So, you know, when you're trading clients, they cancel on you all the time. And then you have to move your schedule around. And then you can't, you know, then you maybe, you know, you get into these arguments with them because they don't honor your your policy about okay 24 hours notice or you're gonna get charged and it's uncomfortable and like then you're running and doing all these classes and you're physically getting exhausted lifting those weights all day and trying to get your own workout in and then you're teaching these classes because i was also still doing that and i do the classes with the client and it's not the workout that i wanted to do for the day but i did it because that's how i do my classes and then i'm physically just like and mentally done like mm -hmm. forget a relationship that wasn't happening like you know like there's yep. there's no time for anything you're like you're just and you feel like you can't take a day off because mm -hmm. then you don't get paid. paid yes that's when i said something has got to change like this is cool i'm making good money but i just don't want my lifestyle i knew this within a year of like doing uh -huh. this whole thing like i was like i just do not want to be the struggling trainer <laughs> like yep. and this is what if one day in the future i want to have a family and have kids this isn't gonna work nope so I, I'm already wanting, wanting to change it now. Um, so with that, I decided to write the book. Good. It's something scalable, like at uh -huh. least something that once it's done, I know it can help people. It's uh -huh. affordable to help people for not everyone that could also afford the training aspect yes. of things. And it's something that could sell in the background. And mm -hmm. that's when I learned about funnels and all the Good. marketing techie stuff. And then, yeah, that's how I decided to start expanding uh -huh. what I was already offering and to make it more like so, I have more free time. And now you don't belong to a gym, right? Now you're doing your own thing basically or? Yeah, no gym, nothing. Got it, yes. Uh, no house, no nothing. <laughs> yeah. I'm totally uh, just, for, so I decided uh -huh. in March 2017. Okay. No, 2018, a year ago. Okay. But I was just gonna leave like uh -huh. the country. I was so, I just needed like a mental break after my book. Uh -huh. I mean, you wrote a book. Yes. I was I was done, like I needed a break. Mm -hmm. It was so much work to get that up. And then I started, um, I got a TV show on my mm -hmm. local ABC station. I was filming every week uh -huh. and doing that and then doing, you know, all yes. the things that come along with it, which are awesome and great opportunities. Yep. And I love doing that stuff, but it's like, it's so much of a grind. It's like a nonstop and you do it cause you're in it and you know, you need to do it in order to, to make the book and exactly what you want it to be. You have to put that extra effort in. Mm -hmm. And I loved every second of it. However, you've also reached a point where you're burnt out and yep. you need like a break. So I said, I'm just gonna go. I've always wanted to, to tra I love traveling. And I did my first solo trip when I went to get my yoga certification in Bali about a year before that mm -hmm. time last year that I just left. And ever since that trip, when I went completely away for a month and then I went for a month after that to Thailand, I said, you know, let me just keep traveling alone and see how this is. I loved it. I loved every second, second of it. And I almost canceled that trip because I was like, oh, I have too much to do. I was in the middle of launching the book. There's no way I can go do my yoga training now, like blah, blah, blah. And I'm so glad I just like, I did it anyways. I actually had a, an advisor tell me not to do it and to suck up the money that I was gonna lose. And I just knew in my gut, I'm like, no, you know, I just need to do this. Like, I just need to go. I'm not gonna listen to you advisor. I'm gonna <laughs> go and do this for me. And it, it was the best decision I ever made. I actually rewrote my entire book after that trip. I like scratched my whole idea. Like I just came back just so, just like renewed and energized having those two months off. Mm -hmm. And from that point, I was like, I will make it that in a year, I am leaving here and I will travel for at least a year mm -hmm. and produce this TV show that I want to produce and just learn and explore and make it work. And that's, uh, that moment was really definitive for me. And is this the uh, ending of that year or are you almost done or? No, there's no, there's no end in sight at Good. this moment. <laughs> I mean, I've been now doing this now, like traveling nonstop for, uh -huh a year and like two months. Mm -hmm. So I, I do come back to the US every couple of months for mm -hmm. like a month to reset. Luckily, mm -hmm. I'm fortunate enough that my mom decided to let me keep all her my stuff at her house. <laughs> <laughs> so like I didn't have to get a storage unit and stuff yeah. like that. But I can come back, I can switch my clothes depending on the climate and yeah. like really just like when I come back here, I really focus and I work and then yeah. I go back out again. And, and I decided because I was traveling so much and I really miss traveling that that human interaction. I was doing some online programs, online coaching, yep. all that kind of stuff. So no face-to-face. -face no face-to-face. -face. Yep. And once you're, I'm a face-to-face -face kind of gal. So mm -hmm. like not having that for a, couple, for a while, I'm like, okay, this isn't, 
I, I missed that. So I said, you know what, I want to do retreats. I've always been the planner in like all of my groups. I'm, I'm traveling and, and really living like a local. I'm having different experiences that you can't even find in a, in a little, like a travel book. Yeah. You're not, do, you're not gonna find the stuff that I've found. I found it by talking to people and I'm able to stay in a country as long as I want. So I really have the time to explore. And that's when I said, you know what, I'm gonna do uh, my first retreat in Costa Rica because uh -huh. I was in Costa Rica for 10 weeks <laughs> and, and I really, you know, found out everything there is to know about it. And I found the best surf instructor and I found the most amazing house and I found the best chef when I was there. So it's like things all kind of came together uh -huh. and I decided I was gonna launch that retreat and I did it with exactly three months to market it. Uh -huh. I mean, I just like, and that's not ideal. You usually wanna <laughs> try to give yeah. like yeah. six months, the longer you can give the better, but I didn't wanna wait. I just wanted to get it out there. Um, so I went for it, I got everything together, and I've launched that, that sucker in like August of last year. And then the first retreat was in October. And ever since then, I mean, it was such an amazing experience. And mm -hmm. I just, I really enjoyed doing it and sharing what I was learning with others and sharing what I already know about, you know, nutrition and all that and showing people how you can still have that stuff when traveling and on vacation and still enjoy yourself. Yep. So uh, from that first retreat, which was, a test. I mean, I knew, I assumed I would continue with them for sure, uh -huh. but it was like a game on after that. And that's awesome. why this next year I have now business partners, a separate retreat company, and I'm going like full in with like six to eight retreats a year. Wow. So, <laughs> when is your next one? Uh, the next one is in Peru over Memorial Day weekend. Awesome. There currently is still a few spots left. Uh, I found this amazing house in Northern Peru uh -huh. that's right on the beach because uh -huh. Uh, I heard that more people wanted to do the beach stuff instead of the mountain one. Uh, so I, I chose this location based off that. But I also like to surf. Mm -hmm. And this house is right in front of the surf break. And I have oh, that's an, awesome. Oh, it's really cool. Um, and I have a really amazing surf instructor coming who used to be a professional from the U.S., but she lives there now. And she'll be our surf instructor. And, you know, all the foods included. I, I wrote a gluten-free cookbook. Awesome. So all the food's gluten-free, but also it's going to be local and Peruvian. I have a Peruvian chef. So uh -huh. I'm super Peruvian food, by the way, is like... Awesome. Freaking top notch, amazing. <laughs> yep. So the retreat is gonna be, I have a four day and a seven day option, testing that four day option because I know that not everyone mm -hmm. can get off work for the full week. So I wanted to see if this would draw more people in. And so far it is drawing more awesome. people in, which is okay. My theory proved correct. <laughs> and at the retreat, I will just mention there is alcohol. <laughs> because like when I travel, I do enjoy a glass of wine or something yes. that's not what the retreat's about. The retreat's not about getting drunk, but this is also a vacation. So mm -hmm. that's how my retreats are. I call them fitness and adventure retreats. Uh, so there's a lot of outdoor activities, all the cool outdoor stuff that we can do. I'm gonna add in cool hikes, the surfing. We have swimming with sea turtles in Peru. Like that's what's local to the area. Um, and then we're also gonna be able to have fun and enjoy ourselves and, and just really get to know each other and mm -hmm. create new connections with people that People come from all over the world. That's awesome. So that's what I really, I really like about them. So the biggest takeaway from people who are actually listening, you guys, it's, I would say that is A, listen to your heart, right? Yeah. Love what you do. Mm -hmm. And then once you have figured out what that is, you just have to go all in and do it. And then first never works out as amazingly as you plan it unless you hit like a lucky break somehow, but yep. usually never the case. So don't get, uh, you know, sad or offended or quit when it's not the way you wanted it. But mm -hmm. if you love what you do and you think there is to it, just like you did, then obviously you come back at the drawing table, just like you did, yeah. rebuild it and create it and just live it. That's what you're doing right now, right? Literally, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and that, nothing turns out. I like. I wanted to emphasize that it doesn't probably turn out the way you want the first time. Yeah. First retreat was not sold out. <laughs> I didn't lose money though. That's good. So that's I was good. like, yeah. you know, okay, at least I'm not in debt. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. You gotta start so, somewhere, so. And they're not cheap either, as in like put yeah. up a retreat. No, and the yeah. amount of time that you end up putting yep. that in, like it's it's way, it's so much more than you think it's gonna be. You're like, oh sure. Oh, yeah. It's organizing everything, because I don't yep. go through with those retreat centers, which of course you, ha you can do. If yep. you don't want to deal with that stuff, you can do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but you will not make as much money. And for me, it's like my, my full on career now and the main way I make money. So I'm gonna maximize that as much as I possibly can yep. and do as much as I can myself. Mm -hmm. So. And how um, you market on ClickFunnels? Because you mentioned yeah, that you I, have yeah, ClickFunnels. Yeah. That's what I started doing all my funnel building with. So I, my, I launched my book. I marketed through there. I have a, awesome. a free snack guide that I use Facebook ads. That's how I've grown my email list. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all through ClickFunnels. And then the retreats now, every retreat is built on a separate funnel through ClickFunnels. However, awesome. I'm, I'm going to build a new website and make it like 
totally just a legit routine. website. Yeah, yeah. not just a funnel recipe. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so that's the next step. Well, it's more like a website. I would say at this point is more like credit creditability than anything. Yeah. And click funnels is basically to actually make the sale. Yeah, it's yeah. getting the money, getting yeah. the, getting the people there, yeah. and getting the money paid. Yeah, yeah, that's hundred percent right. And uh, yeah, if you guys don't use click funnels, you should definitely check it out because mm -hmm. we use click funnels too for all of our leads and advertising. And then now that the new book is coming out, I'm going to use uh, click funnels for it. And then. We will have so many things and events and everything. ClickFunnels is just basically replacing websites right now for sales. Yeah. Th there used to be like websites that's called the Rainmaker website. I remember when we first designed our websites. Okay. There were no ClickFunnels yet. It was like five, six years ago. And then, um, or ClickFunnels wasn't as big yet. Yeah. Like, no, I think it wasn't even around that long ago. But I anyways. It, yeah, maybe yeah. it's like four years old yeah. or something. But anyways, when, and then ClickFunnels came out and then uh, those Rainmaker websites are the past actually. <laughs> Yeah. It's all about ClickFunnels. I never. Yeah. I just started with ClickFunnels, and my yeah. my business coach recommended it, and yeah. that's when I did it, and I set it yeah. up, and now it's like it's running smooth. It takes a, it's a little bit of a learning curve, mm -hmm. um, but once you get the hang of it, it's it's pretty easy to just keep rebuilding yes. the funnels. You just copy the the template that you like. So, so, few things. What is your book called, so people could look it up? Oh yeah. Uh, so my book is Eat to Thrive, the Anti Diet Cookbook. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a catchy name too, and yeah. it's it's Thank basically you. what everybody needs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe in dieting. You know, yes. I don't diet. I've never dieted in my life. What does that word even mean? Exactly. Like everybody eats totally differently because your bo everyone's body is totally different. So yep. just get the basic, get the information, and mm -hmm. then figure out what works for you. And then I also built a, a macronutrient calculator on my awesome. website. I had that yeah. custom built. And that way, uh, so the book goes along with that. It teaches yeah, that, everyone yes. about the macros, and then you calculate your macros at, on the website for uh -huh. free. Anyone can do it. And yep. then you follow those guidelines to then eat a certain way, and all the That's recipes awesome. have all the macro information. That's, That's really good. Forever. <laughs> that was yeah, the but, hardest part of writing that freaking book, <laughs> was figuring out the macros. Yep. Um, but, yeah. but now you have a full guide that you, I assume, lead to the website for them to calculate, or they can hand calculate it in the book or something, right? It leads them to yep. the website, and then I also get their email. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Did you see that? That's marketing right there. Right there. And so. then eventually I sell to them. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, retreat. Too. Amazon doesn't yeah. let you get the email, yep. so I sell exactly. it through Amazon. Yep. And that's the one thing I'm like, oh, I want that email. Like, you're yep. my customer, but you don't know. So you have to somehow get them back. Yep. And that's my one way of trying to get them yep. back. You know, it's so funny so. that you say that, and that's what I experienced too, because we're missing out on those people, actually. And yeah. uh, I had so many people who just like message or email or tell me, or I see my book, they tag me in. Yeah, and I'm like, oh exactly. man, I wish I could actually contact these people. But I, know. But I don't have their emails so, or anything for that matter. No, they don't give you anything. That's <laughs> yeah. the one super annoying thing <laughs> yeah. about, because it kind of messed up my funnel flow, to be honest, mm -hmm. because I was, so what I did on Click the ClickFunnels page is that first I'll take their email, then the second page, I'll just send them to Amazon. Got it. Yeah. That's another way to maybe try to uh -huh. like make the landing page like, okay, put your email in to go to the next step and then it just takes them to Amazon to buy it anyways. Yeah, but now I think or, you can also check out with Amazon, but I'm not hundred percent sure. We would I would have to look into it. Meaning okay. like like Amazon working on it that it's integrated so it's you just literally use Amazon to check out, but you still stay on ClickFunnels. You know what I mean? Oh. So you don't have to send them. Oh, yeah. But I don't know that yet because I haven't looked into it. I just heard okay. about it. Yeah. Well, if you find out, let me know. Yeah, because okay? <laughs> yeah, I would need that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so what would you recommend to our personal trainers and gym owners who are listening, watching right now? Anything that, because you have went through lots of things and you found finally what you love. Yeah. But I guarantee you that so many listeners are at burning out. But yeah. usually I say they're burning out because they don't know where they are going. That's one thing. Yeah, you and just. You just found out. So now you are like all motivated and everything. And, but anyways, go ahead. It's just, this is a constant thing. Like it's yep. a constant figuring it out. Like yep. I didn't think I was going to be doing this a year ago. I exactly. didn't think any of this stuff was going to be happening to me. It's just, you can't think like, I go against what all these big time marketers and business people say that you need to have these long strategic plans. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> because yep. your life changes and you can't be working. Like it's good to have a, a vision in mind mm -hmm. of how you want your lifestyle to be, I think. Yes. And, and what your mission is and just know the impact you want to make. I think that that's important to solidify as soon as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, just an idea. And then be flexible because you're going to be going through these ups and downs where you do hit lows all the time mm -hmm. and, and you're like, just feel like you're running around without a purpose. And every time you feel like you're losing your purpose, that's when you need to stop everything that you're doing and you need to take a step back. And if that means that you don't work for a month and you don't work from, if you can do that, you do whatever you need to do to get back to you. And most of the time it's because we're just, we're, ju we're just doing things to do things, to feel productive, 
and then we totally actually wrote a post about this today. We totally forget about why we're even doing it. Yeah. And that's when you start to lose your focus, your purpose, and your passion for things. And you start to burn out. Exactly. Yeah. Then you're actually less productive and it is your money probably is less. All that stuff's starting to it, yep. you know, it goes down a certain spiral. And that's when you need to just stop and you need to think about, okay, why am I doing this? Like why am I even in this? And then just focus on the things that you like to do. Think about what you're good at doing. Think about okay, who can I contact around me? Mentors have been a huge thing for me to help awesome. me get some new ideas. Who can I surround myself with in my network yep. to work together? To, to, to create you know a better life for, for me, for my clients, for everyone else. It's also like a big thing for me that I think a lot of trainers don't do is work together. <laughs> but God forbid someone steals your client, guess what's not gonna happen? Your client's with you because they're with you and they like you. <laughs> um, but that's how you, you actually grow a real business. And, and, and sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you or anything, but mm -hmm. I always add to that a one, one liner, which is like, and if they do steal, they did not steal it. You did something wrong and they actually left on their own. Yeah, no, you know I, really, what I, mean? I really like that. Yeah, because yeah, a loyal client, if you're, yep. if you're you know, training them correctly and you're yep. giving them a good experience, yep. they're not gonna go leave you exactly. <laughs> for anyone else that might seem flashy or something like yep. that. So I really like that you just yep. said that. So don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid to collaborate with other people, work together. It's so much easier when it's not all on you. Mm -hmm. And then that's how you actually get the word out there and create a buzz. It's by networking with others, by interacting with other people, by doing collaborative events, if that's something that you can do. And then also I think it's super important to have a mentor. Yep. Have multiple different mentors in all different industries. And just being really open to sharing what's what's really going on with my business and my problems and, and asking, I'm not afraid to ask for help. That's another big thing. I think a lot of people in general are really afraid to ask for help. I wouldn't have gotten where I am today if I didn't ask for help help and see that like okay something's not going right I don't know a lot about this I need to talk to somebody and I'm willing to also pay for that help too mm -hmm. there's nothing I, I've hired multiple business coaches because that's what I need to do to get ahead don't be afraid to invest in your business you need to invest in your business exactly why do you think you're like it's people in the fitness industry you think they're somehow different than everyone else that's running a business like you don't need to do this basic business stuff no you need to probably have some sort of coach if you don't know how to set up funnels if you don't know how to do Facebook ads or pay somebody to do them for you. However, in the beginning stages, that's usually not possible. Yep. So you have to be doing a lot of stuff yourself. So invest in a good coach that's gonna be really focused on things that you know that you're not strong in, mm -hmm. and then learn as much as you possibly can until you're then able to hire somebody to do all this extra stuff for you. But that's not gonna happen most likely until a couple years in business when you've got something already going as much as you can yourself with minimal you know, other people interacting. But Exactly. That's why you also have your friends and I'm telling you to collaborate with others and that's what also helps get the business going sooner rather than later when you have a limited uh, amount of resources in the beginning. You gotta utilize those other people, super important. Exactly. So where could people find you right now? So you can definitely find me on Instagram <laughs> at Katie Sampaio. So it's S-A-M-P-A-Y-O, because I know it's a very, <laughs> very weird name to say. Just and, to me. <laughs> yeah, no, a lot of people have problems. Okay. Don't worry about it. Um, and then, of course, on you know, Facebook, it's the same thing. And then I have my website, which is katiesampio.com. That's where all of those places you're going to find out about what I'm doing, the retreats that are coming up. You'll see how my marketing is. You'll find the calculator. You'll see my free snack guide. So if you're interested in how I set that stuff up, you can kind of like scope through all my stuff. All the links are from the website. And... Yeah. Do you right now even help people? If personal trainers or gym owners reach out to you, do you have them like as a, almost like you mentioned coaching or Actually, you don't do I, that yet? You I do. do that? I haven't done oh, that awesome. in a little bit because of the traveling, but I have had multiple clients in the past. Mm -hmm. And I really like doing that. And actually, awesome. to be honest with you, this is something that I want to move into a, make a whole new part of my business in the, ne the next year, like have mm -hmm. a, an online course set up because I've already paid for all the coaches. I've exactly. been in the business world before I became a trainer. I think more like a business person than a trainer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I've been so successful. Um, and I know a lot of trainers just don't know about the marketing and business yep. stuff, that you're passionate about what you do. And that's a whole other thing that it's like, whoa, um, so I actually am having some plans awesome. in the next year to, to build out an online Good. course and to do some more coaching. I miss that so much. Good. I love business and marketing and I want to help other trainers do and it. And what do you guys, so I know you, we have said it many times or she has said it many times and me too on so many episodes about hiring a coach or a mentor. And I, I just wanted to clear it out that hiring a coach and a mentor 
is basically all about, and paying one, is basically all about pay you for all your mistakes that you have made that cost you thousands of dollars, <laughs> if not more. And then now what you're paying is basically what you have learned and give it to you so you don't have to pay those thousands of dollars or at least you don't throw it out the window and you don't go out of yeah. business because now what you are paying, you're paying less money and you have less headaches and you get success versus trying to figure out on your own. That's basically the difference. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so important. Like that, yep. I'm so glad I hired my one business coach. She got mm -hmm. helped me, set all my funnels up, everything. Now I know Facebook ads, you know, like I still made my own mistakes yep. for sure, but it mm -hmm. made that process like go from zero to 60 so much faster. Like people that want, you can do it on your own, but you're gonna, as you said, make, spend a lot more money, yep. a lot of time really. And it's how fast do you wanna get something up and running? It could take you a couple of years to learn all that stuff. Mm -hmm. If it's just you think, like going to random uh, YouTube videos and trying to watch as much free shit as you can. But when it comes down to it. People are experts and they, they're gonna charge for what they know, just like we charge for what we think uh, we're worth. And yep. you gotta respect that and yep. take and not feel bad about spending that money when it's an investment that will pay you back like 20 times more mm -hmm. once you implement these things. Yes, Te Katie? Thank you very much. Yeah. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, we are going to wrap this up. And guys, please don't forget, visit her Instagram website. Yes. Um, please share this episode, rate it if you loved it, send any feedback whatsoever. And thank you very much for listening again.